It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my dad. Good morning, Big Bob Payne. Dad, how's it going today? What's shaking? Hey, good morning, Ryan. You ready for the Super Bowl? I'm looking forward to the commercials and seeing how Adam Levine does at halftime, but I'm not so sure I'm an East Coast or West Coast fan this year. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it hurts to see Tom Brady out there uh, every <laughs> year. He's like 41, 42 now. And it just says, you know, why can't I be in the NFL, Bob? I don't get it. <laughs> you know, he's, he's not a really nice guy. He makes his wife go out to work. Yeah, All the money he makes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about common complaints. We're going to discuss the common complaints you have when it comes to your planning and investing. We're going to talk about real estate and retirement. Bob and I are going to break down the pros and cons of using real estate as an investment vehicle in retirement, along with this week's financial propaganda, where we call out the worst advice the financial media has been broadcasting, and our spotlight segment, where we actually review and break down someone's real retirement plan for you. We have our colleague, financial advisor, Aaron Dessen on the show this morning to do that. So let's hop to it. Bob, at our firm, Payne Capital Management, you know, our team probably meets with thousands of people a year, and we review their investment portfolios if we were to add it up. And for the most part, you know, we really hear a lot of the same complaints. We see a lot of the same issues. So I wanted to talk about some of the more common complaints that we hear and are those complaints really justifiable. And a big one that we heard last year was, my account didn't grow much. Well, that's a, a very appropriate comment, Rob, rather a complaint because last year, the markets didn't really do all that well, did they? It wasn't pretty, Bob. In fact, if you look at it in terms of dollars, almost every single asset class around the world was negative last year, except for like municipal bonds and cash. But other than that, we literally had the entire world on sale last year. So I guess the question when you see something like that is, do I have an appropriate portfolio? Because you know, one of the things that happened last year with 90% of all asset classes down in dollar terms, our clients still were able to pay their bills because their dividends and their interest came in like clockwork. Yeah, and that's a really important thing to distinguish right there is, you know, you hear a lot about this. I know you had a client saying to you, hey, Bob, you know, the market was up 7% and my portfolio was flat. What's going on? Well, the reality of it is your client was retired and had most of his money in bonds. So there's no way his portfolio is going to go up when the market does. So the question you really need to ask yourself is, am I getting the returns I need based on my goals, not based on quote unquote what the market's doing? Well, that's why bull markets are dangerous, right? Because it gets you to do things that you ordinarily would not do, right? Because we should be investing based on our goals. But when you see everybody else making a lot of money in the FANG stocks or in the S&P 500, you tend to want to take more risk. And, and usually that doesn't end well, does it? No, we were talking about this again last week. You had this client, of course, he's at the cocktail parties, right? He's, mm -hmm. uh, he's at the country club, you know, out drinking with the guys. And he's talking about how they're making all this money in the market. This before it obviously went down. This is earlier last year. And he just couldn't figure out why he wasn't. And of course, he wanted to get more aggressive. And that's exactly what happened. So it's so important that you keep looking at what your goals are and keep matching what you're doing versus your goals because you're going to exactly you're going to hurt yourself very badly by going away from that discipline. Well, that's why I'm making a movie about your portfolio right now, right? It's called The Right Stuff. <laughs> I like that, Bob. Well, what does the right stuff entail? That's what I want to know. Well, the right stuff is what's going to get you to your goals with the least amount of risk, with the least volatility and the most certainty because it really isn't about relative performance or what you made yesterday or what you're going to make this year. It's about achieving your goals and it's about staying invested. And the problem with taking more risk is most people end up losing the most money in a bull market when it ends because they get the riskiest at the end. Yeah, we forget a lot of times one of the biggest determiners of your returns long term is just not losing in a down market. You don't have to capture all the upside, but the key is when the market goes down that you're protected and it becomes more crucial as you're retired. Bob, another complaint that I hear 
all the time is I only hear from my advisor when he wants to buy or sell a stock. I never get any advice on anything else. This is a very bad sign, actually. This is a true complaint. Well, it's a reality. If you're a commissioned salesperson, Rye, would you call people to buy and sell all the time so you could make your mortgage payment? It makes practical sense, Bob. I need to make a living too. Yeah. I mean, that's the problem. You want to make sure. And the question you want to ask is, is my advisor... Now, anybody can call themselves a financial advisor, financial consultant, an investment advisor. But the question is, are they a stockbroker? Are they a commissioned salesman? Are they a salesperson? Or are they a fiduciary? Big difference, right? Yeah, it's unbelievable in our industry. Anybody can call themselves a financial advisor. So who knows? It could be the person who's selling insurance and all of a sudden they're a financial advisor. And I think the critical question, Bob, you need to ask is, are you a fiduciary? And all that means is as a fiduciary, by law, they have to act in your best interest. And most advisors are not fiduciaries. And that's, to me, the really the determining factor between working with an advisor and a quote unquote broker. You know, right, I'm not a marketing genius, but wouldn't it make sense for people who are helping you to manage your money want to be called a fiduciary? Wouldn't they want everyone to know they have your best interest at heart, not their own? I mean, who are the institutions that fight the most about the fiduciary standard? Ironically, it's the brokerage industry. <laughs> They're one arguing that, no, we don't want to have to be liable for the advice that we give, which is crazy. But that's the way the industry is set up. You would think there'd be higher standards to give someone financial advice, but there really isn't. So it's really important is you, the consumer, to make sure the person you are working with is abiding by that fiduciary standard. And again, most advisors are not. So you're telling me that the banks and the brokerage firms, you know, they want their marketing statement to be, we're going to do what's in our best interest. You, Mr. Investor, on the other hand, you're on your own. <laughs> Sadly, Bob, and I don't like to be cynical, it's a lot like that. So it's really, really important that you, you figure that out. And I think the other thing is, and you can tell by your portfolio, do, and the question is, do you have a collection of investments or do you have a coherent financial plan or you know, a portfolio that's strategically aligned with your goals? That's the real key there. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, these are all the issues that I have. I don't really know if I'm working with a fiduciary. You know, I don't really know if I have the right allocation. Do I have a portfolio that's built based on my goals, not based on the stock market's whims? Well, here's your shot to get a second opinion. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full, holistic financial review. Just bring in your statements, print them off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to take them all. We're going to load them into our personalized portal for you where you can view everything at a bird's eye view, and we can do a full comprehensive analysis of your portfolio. And we're going to look at all those critical components. We're going to look at things like fees. Yes, there's hidden costs in your investment portfolio. Bob and I are going to break down all the hidden costs on those annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products, and show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to fill in your income gap in retirement. And we're going to look at diversification. Is your portfolio protected? When the market sold off in December, were you protected? We're going to show you how to safeguard your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? And all you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Be one of our next 10 callers. If you've saved over 200000 for retirement, our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. Of course, there's no plan unless you call our text. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne, and I'm with my son, Rye Payne, and we're the pains of no pain, no gain, financial radio. Hi, I'm a cleverly devised personification of Wall Street. I'm one wild roller coaster ride away from wreaking havoc on your investments, and I love to mess with your emotions. If you're not properly diversified, you can bet I'll keep you up all night thinking about me. 
There's really only one way to keep me off your mind, and that's by coming in for a visit with the team at Payne Capital Management. They'll ease your fears about market volatility with their signature Total Financial Master Plan. They'll even help you get financially organized with their 360 financial portal. It's a great way to get all your statements in one place. Otherwise, when I take a plunge, I'll send you scrambling through your file cabinet hoping you're well prepared. Don't wait for turmoil to hit. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Schedule your visit with Payne Capital Management. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with the team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Strategist of Payne Capital Management. And the polar vortex brought bitter cold temperatures to the city this week, but the sun was shining on the street of dreams as stocks had their best January in more than 30 years. As I noted last week, this should mean the rest of 2019 should be a good year for the stock market. The January barometer tells you so goes January, so goes the year. And it's worked 87% of the time since 1950. Stocks charged higher after the Federal Reserve left rates unchanged this week and signaled flexibility in scaling back its $4 trillion balance sheet. Now, the Fed's dovish comments eased investors' concerns that higher rates would increase borrowing costs and curtail corporate profits. This shift in verbiage by the Fed Chairman Jerome Powell in essence, provides what we call a put on the market, providing insurance against future declines in the stock market. On another front, the United States and China started high-level talks in Washington this week as political and economic pressures on both sides should cause President Trump and Chinese President Xi to reach at least a partial deal by the March deadline. Stocks were not the only winners on the week as the bond market rallied across the board. The 10-year Treasury now yields only 2.63%. That's also a big positive for the housing market, as most mortgage rates are tied to the 10-year Treasury yield. The bottom line is the market has been predicting a slowing global economy, and that negative view is already priced in the market. Earnings are slowing but continuing to grow. We have an accommodative Fed. Interest rates and inflation are low and going lower. Unemployment is under 4%. P.E. ratios are now lower than they were at this time last year. And dividends, which historically generate close to 50% of the return you achieve in stocks, are going up once again this year. So sit back, enjoy your January statement, hang in there and stay warm. Spring is just 47 days away. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, do I have a portfolio that's appropriate to my goals, to my dreams, to my family's risk tolerance? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? Simply give us a call or text 844 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Hi, I'm a soon-to-be-retired mom. I'm also a grandmother, and as much as I enjoy visiting with my grandchildren, I'd like to be able to head home at the end of the weekend. I also want to make sure that they get a top-notch education one day. And of course, I want to look out for myself as well. With the proper financial plan in place, I can accomplish all of those goals. What about you? What are you doing to prepare for retirement? Make sure your family is cared for in retirement. And please, don't turn your weekend family visits into a permanent vacation. Schedule a visit with the team at Payne Capital Management. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Take control of your financial future. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know in the winter of 1780, it was so cold that the New York Harbor froze over? You could have walked from Manhattan to Staten Island on the ice. Let's hope it doesn't get that cold ever again. Although, if you had some sled dogs, it could do wonders for the commute. Anyway, keep listening to No Pain, No Game. Mush!
It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to make sure you have the most common sense advice that you can use for your planning and investing. That's why we put together our latest guide, Highlights from the New Tax Law, just to give you all the details of new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. Text the word bullish to 555-888. Highlights from the new tax law. Get all the details on the new tax reform. You can download our guide for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's B U L L I S H to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555 888. So, Bob, one decision you might be making with regards to your retirement plan is putting the emphasis on using real estate as an investment vehicle as opposed to, let's say, funding retirement accounts. Do you have any clients that successfully use rental properties? to create the retirement income that they need without having to save much elsewhere? I mean, what's your experience with that? Because it comes up a lot. I mean, rental real estate sounds like a great idea, Ryan. It's it's nice if you can have somebody do it for you, but typically it, it falls on the owner and you yes. then become a full-time and you're not retired any longer. You end up working for the rest of your life because uh, real estate requires a lot of attention. Yeah. And I think if anything, we find that with a lot of our clients that are heavy invest in real estate, one of the biggest challenges is starting to liquidate some of that real estate and start using it in a more liquid portfolio that to your point, Bob, is less hands-on. Because I like to joke, your municipal bond portfolio is never going to call you up and say, hey, the roof needs to be fixed at two in the morning. That's so true, Ryan. There's so many investors that I've worked with in the past where they were so happy to get rid of their rental real estate. It's not just the work that has to be done. It's collecting rent. It's evicting tenants. There's always something going on. It's a very tough way to earn income. And it really isn't, you know, you're really not retired. You're actually, it's a business. You know, it's, there's a lot of sweat equity involved in generating those rentals. And the other thing too is what we forget is when we buy real estate property, all of a sudden our asset is now illiquid, right? And in retirement, I think one of the goals you want to have is you want to be more liquid, not less liquid. So if like, for instance, Bob, like let's say you need money for a big vacation or something like a medical issue comes up, and you're going to need more money. Well, it's a lot harder to access that capital if it's tied up in real estate than if you have a liquid investment portfolio. So that's another reason why you really want to balance out what I would call your liquid portfolio versus illiquid portfolio, especially in retirement. Yeah, so true. And it's a, um, it's anything else, you know, like you say, your bond portfolio doesn't call you at two o'clock in the morning because you know the toilet's clogged. The other thing to think about too is, and I've run this analysis a lot. You really want to see what your ROI or return on investment is on your real estate as well. Because a lot of times you may be collecting rental income, but last time I checked, real estate carrying costs aren't cheap, right? You can have everything from, you know, whatever the real estate taxes are every single year, the insurances that you have to pay, any upgrades you have to make on the property. Like I had a client recently who's renting out his house in Greenwich, Connecticut, and we figured that with the rent he was collecting, if he sold the house, and put his investments into a portfolio, he'd actually generate more income in a liquid portfolio than he was on the actual real estate. That's true. You always have to look at what is the market value of that real estate and what is it generating net of all the expenses because real estate taxes tend to go higher. Utility costs tend to go higher because there's that hidden insidious tax called inflation that has its biggest impact on your home and your home expenses. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think that's the other thing we forget about too. When we think about the stock market, we think about the stock market going up and down. And that's one of the things you don't like about the stock market is you got to see the prices of your portfolio every day. Whereas like you said, Bob, if I own a house, I don't have to see the price fluctuate every day. So a lot of the emotion is taken out of it. But what we also forget is our investment portfolio pays a lot of dividends and interest. And that's a key Mm -hmm. part of your return, just like real estate. No, so true. And it's a, uh, you know, and the biggest thing is liquidity, right? As you mentioned earlier, if you need money, sometimes if you're retired, you can't borrow any longer, you know, without a W-2 or without any earned income, banks in today's environment aren't going to lend you money. And to have to sell a property when everybody knows you need to sell a property, you're not going to get the right price. Yeah, no, exactly right. So it's, there's a lot of challenges there. The other thing that we hear a lot about too is, well, what if I just took a reverse mortgage against my property? And in my experience, that's usually your last, last resort because the deals that you get when you do a reverse mortgage are usually not a great deal on your end. The bank that's structuring it usually makes out a lot better than you do, Bob. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, right, it's not just the reverse mortgage. It's just the cost of real estate in general is a lot greater than you remember on any type of an investment 
You, know, you remember what you paid for it and what you sold it for. But in the interim, you didn't remember putting in the new heater, the new air conditioner, the new landscaping, or you know, paying for the landscaper every year, or for you know, putting in a new dishwasher. There's a lot of expense, and for whatever reason, you know, the people that sell these products, they tend to sell products that obsolesce very quickly anymore. No, that's exactly right. And the other thing too, I think you want to think about, and this is why I think it's important to run some sort of financial analysis, is put it in the context of your overall game plan, right? Nothing is more therapeutic than sitting down and saying, okay, here's what I'm going to need to live on in retirement. Here's what my assets are going to generate. Here's where I'm going to need more money down the line. Like I just ran retirement projections for one of my clients the other day who does have a lot of money in real estate. And we looked at it, and if he keeps all that money locked up in real estate throughout his whole life, he's going to run out of money. So we actually put Mm. a plan in there where he actually sells that real estate so we can use that asset to live on later on. He wants to live there for a couple more years, but he says, man, by the time I'm 70, he's like, I don't want all the carrying costs. And we talk a lot about that too, is with real estate... If you're living somewhere, it might be better to downsize, might be better to rent, might be better to get out of New Jersey because the taxes there are terrible. But these are all the things you want to start thinking about, and these are all the things that can be modeled out for you. Yeah, so true, Ryan. And I think it's just like anything else. In every joint account relationship, you're going to have one of the spouses who's very intimately involved, whether it's in the decisions on the finances or on the real estate. And you know, I've had a lot of meetings with people where the, the couple will come in and one spouse who's very involved in the real estate, another spouse who's not involved at all, saying, hey, and once he passes away, I don't have time to, to, to stay on top of this. I don't know how to do plumbing. I don't know how to fix, you know, how to change a light bulb. I don't want anything to do with it. You need to do very in-depth long-term planning to make sure that that strategy fits into your long-term plans. And if you're thinking, I need to get into a long-term plan, I need to know if I'm financially healthy. I need to know what I own in my portfolio is appropriate and know if the fees I'm paying are also appropriate. I need to know if I'm positioned to succeed, to achieve my goals, to achieve my dreams, and to do it the least amount of risk. And here's your chance. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved over $200,000 for retirement, my son and I will complete for you a total financial master plan. Now, this is a full holistic review where we look at everything. You know, just gather all your statements. We just finished the year. Everything's just come in the mail. We don't have to open the statements. Stick them in a shopping bag. Stick them in a folder. Pick up the phone or text and give us a call and set up an appointment. We're going to review everything with you and build your own 360 financial portal that will allow you to look at all the key elements of a successful strategy. And that's diversification, cost and income. Are you truly diversified? Do you have any hidden risks in that portfolio? Have you bulletproofed your portfolio against the current volatility of the financial markets? Are you being overcharged? I don't know about you, but I really dislike being overcharged. Let's take a look at those fees. Let's make sure you're not being hit by any hidden costs that are keeping you from achieving your goals. And lastly, income. We all need a dependable, repeatable income stream when we're retired. There's that income gap that we all need to fill once we're retired. And if you're already retired, hey, the number one goal is to stay retired. And lastly, we want to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan, answering that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years? That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 safe for retirement, you're one of the next 10 callers, 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844 844- 752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Bye. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, what did you find out there this week in the 
horrid world of financial propaganda. All right, I found out it's time to dismount the stock market rodeo. <laughs> wow, that is that is some amazing writing. That's some heavy stuff. How does one dismount the stock market ra- rodeo? Can't say it right. Well, according to this chief investment strategist, okay. when you go to the rodeo, you can ride the bull for eight seconds. And since the market has been up since Christmas Eve, your eight seconds is up. Huh. How do we know that's eight seconds? I mean, since Christmas Eve, I mean, that's more than eight seconds, Bob. At this point, I mean, it's like three weeks at least, almost a month. Right. This is classic propaganda. You know, in their mind, in order for you to keep reading, it's about market timing. But you and I know it's all oh. about time in the markets. And eight seconds ain't enough to get you to your goals. No, it's a really good point. And I read a good article this weekend that wasn't financial propaganda, but someone went back historically and they calculated that 45% of your return in the stock market is from dividends. And if you know what dividends are, that's the income that stocks pay. So think about that, Bob. So basically half your return in the stock market has nothing to do with the market going up or down. It's just the fact when you hold stocks, they pay out dividends while you hold them. And furthermore, this year, dividends are going up which is amazing. It is amazing. You know, last year, the stock market didn't go up, but your dividend payouts did. And those dividends, you can cash. They're real. You can buy stuff with it, right? So the idea is, you know, you want to have a portfolio that generates both income and capital gains because capital gains come in spurts and they're not predictable and they're not knowable. Yeah. And I think it all goes back. We talk about this all the time, but it's so dangerous to market time, right? It sounds so oh, smart to say, I know when to get in the market. I know, I know when to get out of the market. But the reality of it is it's a fool's earn because when those markets do go up, it's not predictable. When they go down, it's not predictable. I mean, take December. I'm hard pressed to say that anyone really knew the market was going to fall off a cliff after we were at all time highs in the stock market in September. So these things just aren't knowable. And that's why we stress it a lot. It's so important to, A, number one, look at your portfolio and you have to ask yourself, is my portfolio what we call wealth accumulation portfolio, which is more like the rodeo, Bob, right? When you're younger, Mm -hmm, you can kind of put the money away. You can ride that sucker up and down. What's the problem? You're not going to touch that money for years. But like we say this all the time, when you get closer to retirement, when you're within 10 years, you know the stakes get higher. You need a wealth distribution portfolio, which means you got to generate a lot of current income. That's not about being in and out of the market, and you need to build protection into your portfolio. See, that's the problem with financial propaganda. You know, Ry, we tend as average normal human beings to project the future based on our most recent experience. I don't know if you ever noticed this or not. Do you go to the newspaper, go to the internet? Do you only read articles that agree with your opinion at the time? <laughs> yeah, it's it's uncanny, but yes, of course. I always read in the stuff that basically uh, affirms what I believe, Bob. Yeah, so if you're feeling fearful about the market, then you'll gravitate to propaganda like this. I mean, in this article, this economist, this strategist is supposed to be a, a learned investor, and his biggest concern was the partial government shutdown is going to, get this right, it's going to knock down one-tenth of 1% off the fourth quarter GDP. And that's one of the reasons he's bearish. And that just sounds like rocket science to me, Bob. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like goblin group to me, right? Yeah, like, (laughs) you know, and I think, and that's the thing, like financial planning shouldn't be that hard, Bob, right? It should be common sense. And common sense is you need a portfolio that generates enough income that covers my expenses. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, one of your biggest enemies in retirement is going to be inflation. Things are going to cost more in the future. Like I've said this a lot, Bob, but a million dollars today is worth a half a million dollars in 20 years. And even if you're getting 2% at the bank, you're paying taxes on that 2%. So now you're earning only 1.5%. You're actually losing against purchasing power, which makes it so critical to get a plan in place that's based on your goals. Well, the problem is you, you and I do this every day. It's in our face every day. We read about it every waking hour. We're passionate about investing. And both you and I realize that half the return that all of you have made in the last 10 years has come from dividends and interest. And the only way to earn that is to stay invested. And the only way to stay invested is to have a goal, right? Yeah. And I mean, just another point on that, not to belabor it, but here's the other point is like, you know that inflation is going up, cost of living is going up. Well, guess what? Dividends are going up this year. They're adjusting Mm -hmm. with what the cost of living is. And that's a really important point because if you're going to lock your money into a bond, let's say at 2% for the next 10 years, 
that's all you're going to get the next 10 years. So it's important to have some bonds in your portfolio. And we talk about that, but it's also important to have you know income increasing investments in your portfolio as well. You know what the big casualty of financial propaganda has been, Rye? Over the last 20 years, the average investor has had what type of return? 2%, I think. Somewhere really, really low and abysmal. And a balanced portfolio, a very conservative balanced portfolio of stocks and bonds right now generates three and a quarter percent. So you're one and a quarter percent above the average investor in guaranteed income right now today. And that's why it's so important to ignore the noise and be an investor. Exactly right. So I think we belabor the point enough (laughs) for our listeners. (laughs) So if you're thinking to yourself, I need a plan that figures out what kind of income I need. That's the baseline for retirement. You need to figure out that income gap. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next few callers, we have a couple slots left. You have over $200,000 safe for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review, a true financial review where we look at everything. Simply print off those statements off the computer, put them in a folder. January's number should be in. Bring them into the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal, and we're going to get a bird's eye view of your entire financial picture, and then we can start to look at all those critical components. We're going to look at income. Yes, income is way more reliable than the fluctuations of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio to fill in your income gap and account for inflation, the cost of living. It's a big deal. We're going to look at diversification. Is your portfolio properly protected? Did you get hit hard when the market sold off in December? We're going to show you how to protect and safeguard your portfolio for the long term. Then we're going to look at fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in your investment portfolio. Those mutual funds, annuities, insurance products, brokerage products. Bob and I are going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, and we're going to determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies we've worked on for four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved over $200,000 for your retirement our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but if you don't call or text, there's no plan. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with my son, Rye, and we're the pains of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know pinball was once banned in the city? It was in place until 1978. Speaking of pinballs, if you're tired of watching your accounts bounce all over the place, you should keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Bob and I are simple men, so we want to keep it simple for you. And that's why we put together... Our latest guide, Highlights from the New Tax Law, just to get you up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. Highlights from the New Tax Law. Taxes are on the corner. This will just give you all the highlights from the new tax reform so you're prepared. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about me and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. You can subscribe to the show there. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but check it out for yourself. Go to bebullish.com and you can learn more about Bob and myself. And you can catch myself and many of our advisors on Fox Business News, CNBC, Yahoo Finance, most weeks talking about the markets and the economy, giving our insights. So check us out on most of the major networks every week. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And like every week... 
we had some pretty good questions. And we have our producer, Mark Haywood, in the studio to help us with questions. What's going on, Haywood? What's shaking, man? Oh, man. It's an exciting weekend. Super Bowl weekend is here. I've, <laughs> I've got the spread almost ready, but I want you guys to help me settle a debate before the big game. Oh, boy. My wife and I have this debate every Super Bowl. You guys know what pigs in the blanket are, right? Oh, yeah. A, del- sure. a delightful Super Bowl snack. Tell me. <laughs> this, we have the same debate every single year. And I have a hunch what Bob is going to advise me on this, but is it sausage and crescent rolls or is it cut up hot dogs in a biscuit? How do you make your pigs in the blanket? Oh, it's hot dogs. Hands down. See, that's what I say. And that's exactly what I say. Now, I I would also posit that I was waiting for Bob to chime in with the, well, hey, what it's whatever your wife says it is, is, of course, the answer (laughs) we're looking for there. (laughs) <laughs> well, I thought you were looking for culinary advice, not marital advice. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what you're looking for. <laughs> True. I guess I better be careful what I ask for this Super Bowl. But all that to say, we're excited about it. A lot of good food. Before we can get to any of that, though, we have to have our financial Super Bowl, as always. We love to hear from you, love to take your questions, and we have a couple of great contenders, so to speak, in the uh, honor of the Super Bowl weekend. we got a couple of good contenders who've written in to us this week. A question comes to us from AJ in White Plains, New York. He says, Bob, I have seven different IRAs, all at different investment companies. It's gotten to be a lot to keep up with, but I like the idea of being diversified like this. That's a good idea, right? AJ, one of the worst ideas I've ever heard. <laughs> wow, Bob. Don't want to have it. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, AJ. Yeah. I think you lose this debate. Well, here's the problem. When you have seven different IRAs, that means you're working with seven different companies, seven different custodians with seven sets of fees. You know, there's no reason in the world, Rye, to have, you know, all your eggs in one basket. So you want to have one IRA and diversify the eggs. Don't you agree? Yeah, I think that's one of the the big ironies out there. You think by having lots of different custodians or places where your money's held, you're diversifying. But what we find is when we tally all this stuff up on our investment analysis spreadsheet is you own all the same stuff, maybe with different names at different places. You're not truly getting diversified, which is a problem. No, you're not. And that's the thing. When you think about a diversified portfolio, it's you're going to have different names and different titles, right? You're going to have money in your joint account, your individual account, an IRA, 401k, you know, it can get pretty complicated, but you want to manage that money as if it's in one suit, right? And different holdings are in different pockets. So as you always say, yes. right, you want to manage your portfolios in concert with every other dollar you have. And when you have seven different custodians and seven different statements, that's a lot of extra work. And what really happens when you have a lot of extra work, right? You know, you end up not doing it. Things get mismanaged. You end up being overcharged as well because there's discounts when you consolidate, to your point, Bob. And I think that's that's the key. That's a great is, point. Thank you. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a great yeah. Point. When you consolidate your money, you can get some breakpoints on certain investments. Like, for example, our institutional price bond portfolio, you have to have a certain minimum. You can't do that with an accounts all spread out. Yeah, exactly right. So, I mean, there's there's really... The, the pros grossly outweigh the cons of having things consolidated. And I have to say, as you're getting serious about your retirement, you really need a concerted effort. Everything has to be working together. To your point, Bob, you know, from a tax perspective is a big point. You know, things that you have in your brokerage account or your taxable accounts, a lot of that should be tax free. Your more aggressive investments should be in your retirement accounts. So there's a lot of things to think about. And that's why it's so, so important to have a bird's eye view and tally up what you have and figure out how you can consolidate and really put things into one plan. You know what else I see here, right? I see an estate planning nightmare. Seven IRAs with seven different beneficiary forms. You need to keep those up to date. Why have seven when you can have one? Make your life simple, AJ. Consolidate those IRAs. Bob with the power of consolidation. Well, thanks for writing in, AJ. Let's take another question now from Patsy in Red Bank, New Jersey. Patsy says, Ryan, my mom and dad both need nursing home care in their later years, so I'm really worried about needing it myself. I'm 63, and long-term care insurance seems really expensive at this age, but should I go ahead and get it for my peace of mind, if nothing else? Yeah, 63, I can tell you right off the bat, premiums are going to be a lot higher, Patsy. The thing you really want to look at here is, first off, can you self-insure? And this is why it's so critical to run retirement projections, because what you want to look at is, if my portfolio took, you know, whatever those long-term care costs could be that that type of hit, maybe it's a quarter of a million dollars, would that affect your lifestyle? So, you know, and there could be like a halfway point where maybe you get insurance for some of your 
long-term care costs, but whatever it happens to be. But this is why the planning part, Bob, is so important because then you can run those numbers to figure out, does it really make sense to pay the high premiums on a long-term care policy? Well, I like that idea of self-insure, right? What does that mean? Well, that just means if, God forbid, you do need to cover nursing home costs and medical expenses, that your portfolio could cover it. But above and beyond that, it doesn't affect what you're drawing on your portfolio anyway to live on. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess in essence, right? When you're when you're buying an insurance policy or long-term care policy, you're giving your money to the insurance company to manage. They're going to invest it not too differently than you are, right, Rye? And then, except for you're going to be paying them a ton of fees for the um, privilege of, of having them cover your long-term care. And you may just well be able to do it yourself. I, exactly. I mean, the, I think the long story short is there's no free lunch. You know, insurance may make yeah. complete sense, but you got to know you're definitely giving something up and you have to weigh those things out versus what you would do on your own as an investor. And it's a critical analysis that you want to run. And that's one of the analyses that we run when we do our total financial master plan, Bob. So I guess what you're telling me, Rye, there's no free lunch. If we want free lunch, we're going to have to go to Haywood Super Bowl party and get a blanket. <laughs> Come on. I love how you came full circle. Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, let me ask you, Rye. AJ and White Plains and Patsy and Red Bank, scale of 1 to 10, how financially organized do they sound to you? Bob, I'm going to say 3.75. There's a lot of work to be done here. All right. Well, you're very generous uh, versus last week, but let me ask all of you a question. When it comes to being financially organized on a scale of one to 10, where do you stand right now? And if you'd like to be a 10, all you have to do is be one of our next few callers and have saved over 200000 for retirement. Because if you do, Ryan and I are going to run for you your own 360 financial portal. Now think about that. We're going to create a portal where we will update not only your portfolio values in real time, but your entire net worth. More importantly, after you articulate your goals, we're going to list those goals on your homepage that you can check every day and see how you're progressing towards those goals. You're going to have your own financial planning scorecard. This is a total holistic process, which will help you to get from your point A to your point B to your goals, to your dreams. It's a full review. It's the only review you'll ever need. We're going to take all of your investments and sit down with you and go through each and every one of them to see if you have the three key elements of a successful portfolio strategy. We're going to look at diversification, cost, and income. We want to see if your portfolio is truly diversified across asset classes and within asset classes. We want to bulletproof your portfolio against this violent volatility that we've been experiencing in the financial markets. Fees, are you being overcharged? Boy, I hope not. Nothing irks me more than be overcharged, especially by my own portfolio. We're going to look at all the hidden costs that are embedded in most portfolios and help you to eliminate those. Income. Can we increase the amount of cash flow your portfolio produces annually? You know, once we retire, we all have to fill that gap, that income gap in retirement. And while we are retired, our number one goal is to stay retired. So we're going to look at all these things. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan. And finally, we're going to answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, our family's been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844 844- 752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Here's your shot. We have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 safe for retirement, call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion to make sure you're on track with your goals at 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Hi, it's Ryan and Bob here, and we want to talk to you about your cash. Bob, many of us are sitting on a lot of cash right now in our businesses and personal savings accounts. And rest assured, the banks are taking full advantage of our dormant cash. 
That's right, Rye. Not only do you have to worry about FDIC insurance limits, but most savings accounts pay close to 0%. Exactly right. And that's why we're putting together short-term CD ladders so you can have increased FDIC coverage and not to mention rates that are in many cases double what your local savings and local checking accounts are paying. If you want to learn more about how to manage your cash better, simply text the word CASH, that's C-A-S-H, CASH, to 844-752-6692. That's text the word CASH, C-A-S-H, to 844-752-6692. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Bob and I want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date advice that you can apply to your planning and investing. That's why we put together our latest guide, Highlights from the New Tax Law. Just get up to speed on the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. What you need to know about the new tax law, Highlights from the New Tax Law, check it out. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And we have a very special guest on the show this morning, my colleague, Bob's colleague, Aaron Dessen, one of our financial advisors here at Payne Capital. Aaron, it's always awesome to have you on the show. You have the most amazing, deep, booming voice I've ever heard. (laughs) Always so great to be here. Thank you, Ryan. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Aaron. That is a that's a voice for radio, brother. <laughs> All right. So, you know, every week we this is our spotlight segment where we actually analyze a real retirement plan and we dissect it and look at the things that a couple or a person could be doing better to make sure that they're on track for their financial freedom. And Aaron, you worked on a case this past week with a couple. Why don't you give us the background and how you help them get on their path for financial freedom? Sure. So I met with a couple who is hoping to retire as soon as possible. You know, one of their big concerns in retirement is having a portfolio of investments that's going to generate that steady stream of income that can really support them and fill in that income gap. So how old are they now, Aaron? Uh, So she is in her mid-60s and he is in his mid-70s. And are they in a position to retire or not? They are in a position to retire as far as what they have saved, but they do need their investments to work a little smarter for them. Yeah, I notice, and I see this a lot. They're sitting on a tremendous amount of cash right now, a couple hundred thousand. And as we know, at Payne Capital Management, we like to say cash is trash. Cash earns like nothing. Right. And that's the big issue. Not only are they not generating any income from their investments in retirement, but they really have no hedge uh, against inflation in the long term. You know, as the cost of living increases, their cash is doing anything for them. You know, Aaron, I'm looking over the portfolio, and they have those dreaded bond funds. How do they feel about those? So that was actually another thing that they really were having a tough time with in 2018. They saw a lot of fluctuation in their portfolio, and especially on the bond side, they didn't understand why they were losing money when they were in bonds, which was supposed to be that safe, secure side of the portfolio. And after doing the analysis, we broke it down and really saw that it was these really high cost bond funds that were the culprit and you know, causing all the pain and confusion. Well, that's what happens when you have a bond fund. You have, a, even though bonds went up last year, you have a portfolio where I call it heads you lose, tails you lose. And with those high embedded costs, you end up with a negative return, even though it's your safe money and you can't depend on it. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, that's the big thing. We, we preach it week after week. Bob and Ryan and Aaron do not like bond funds. Uh, it, it, you know, The whole idea last year when the market went down is you have bonds in your portfolio as a hedge. And if you're in bonds and they're going down too, that doesn't really help you when the market's going down. And that was last year was a perfect example of why you don't want to own bond funds in your portfolio, specifically in retirement where you really need that portfolio protection. So another big concern of theirs was having a long-term plan in retirement. They had never sat down and looked at some projections to really see what kind of growth they need from their investments and, you know, what their savings looks like based on their lifestyle over the long term. Really what we found was that they have a great savings plan set up. They just need more exposure to growth markets, to growth assets. Yeah. And that's funny. We find one or the other, right? Either you're taking way too much risk, which we find very often, you might have way too much money in the stock market. So when the market goes down, you're in big trouble. But the other risk you have is not taking enough risk. And we see this all the time. So like this portfolio is a perfect example, Aaron, where they have those bond funds, but then they have all that money sitting in cash earning nothing. And your biggest enemy as a retiree, and we talked about on the show a couple of times today, 
is inflation. It's the fact that things are going to cost more. So you got to make sure you actually have the right amount of risk in the portfolio, which means not too much, but not too little as well. And that's the thing. I mean, that's what planning is about. It's not a just it's not just a snapshot in time. You know, take your projection, go home, and don't worry about it. It's got to be a living, breathing process. And you know, Aaron, you're able to show them how to if they could just reduce the cost in their equity strategy, increase a little bit more money to stocks, have a bond portfolio where you actually have a fixed interest rate and a fixed maturity date. They're set for life. But markets change. Time passes, and this is something you'll update for them every year for the rest of their lives so that they can sleep at night. Isn't that right? Absolutely. And that's really the great thing about this 360 portal. We can put everything in. They have a client facing portal where they can check on it whenever they want and update it in real time. And like you said, it's a working document that we go over constantly. Yeah. And I think one other thing to mention here, just to amplify, because it's such a good point, or at least I think it's a good point, is that just by tweaking the portfolio, so they had you know, a lot of money in cash, they had a lot of money in bond funds. And because the fees are high in bond funds, you don't end up generating a lot of income. Just reallocating the portfolio, Aaron, this is what I love here, is you're able to increase their income by over 32000 a year, almost double the amount wow. of income they have coming in an annual basis. And that's just rebalancing the portfolio to meet their needs, kind of transforming the portfolio from what we call you know, just a wealth accumulation portfolio to an actual wealth distribution portfolio or you know, one ready for retirement. Well, Aaron, as your buddy Chris says, there's better outcomes with income. <laughs> That's right. Well, Aaron, great job on this case. Another what we call financial masterpiece. And if you're thinking to yourself, this is the kind of review I need. I really need to figure out like, what kind of risk should I be taking in my portfolio? Am I taking too much risk? Am I taking too little risk in my portfolio? Can I double the amount of income I have to fill in that income gap in retirement? Here's your shot to do it. We're going to do an analysis just like this. We have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself, Bob, and Aaron will run for you our total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review. All you need to do is bring in those statements. The month's over. Bring in those January statements. We're going to plug them into your own personalized financial portal, our 360 financial portal, to give you a bird's eye view of your entire financial life. Then we're going to break it down and do the analytics. We're going to look at all those important things like income. We almost doubled the income this couple is going to receive in retirement. Can we do the same for you? Can we optimize the income on your portfolio? We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in investment portfolios. We're going to break down all the hidden costs and show you how to reduce them so there's more money in your pocket in retirement. And we're going to look at diversification. You need to find the right mix of risk and unrisky assets in your portfolio. Do you have bond funds? We're going to show you how to diversify your portfolio properly and protect it against the downturns. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? Don't miss out. We have a few spots left. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you are one of our next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. No strings attached. Just have to call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. All right. Well, another great show, gentlemen. Aaron, are you excited about the Super Bowl? Who do you think is going to win? Uh, I got to go with the Pats. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't <laughs> want the Pats to win. All our clients are telling us that uh, the Patriots have already lost the popular vote, right? Well, we shall see. Have a great weekend. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.